All right, so today we're talking about robotics and security. Um, one thing that a, a lot of people have mentioned before, you know, is like, okay, whenever personal robotics takes off, um, and even today, what are we going to do to ensure that nobody can hack into that robot or can or can have access to the robot that, that shouldn't? Um, so um, I, I've... I've what I've got here for today is to talk about a few different ways for uh, how we can prevent those sorts of things today and just kind of explore some of the topics and some of the things that are going to be important going forward. Um, robotics introduces a pretty unique, um, well, it's, it's like the same thing as getting your computer hacked into, but with this whole other dimension of like the physical world. Um, so it's, it would be, and I'm sure we'll end up seeing these kinds of things happen in the future, but it's going to be a rather unfortunate thing because someone hacks into your computer, they, they get credit card information, they get, um, you know, maybe some of your files. Someone hacks into a robot, they're able to move around your house and actually destroy stuff. Uh, so it's it's an interesting problem, and um, I'm sure for a lot of people that's, that's pretty scary. Um, and it is scary. Uh, so, you know, what we'll talk about today is how we can prevent that today and, and where we're going. So what I've got here pulled up, just starting off. And again, I wrote a blog post about all of this. Three tips for keeping your robots secure. This is going to apply to uh, people who are building their own custom robots. This is going to apply to people that are purchasing or have purchased, have received a TR1. Um, this applies to people that are working with ROS in particular um, and Linux. Um, but in general, these kinds of ideas apply to, to anything. So I found an article, a research paper, paper scanning the internet for ROS, a view of security and robotics research. And I found a very unfortunate fact about ROS, which it is that by default, the ROS master core um, is open to the internet. There, it, it does not default to, um, you know, uh, private connections or local connections. It defaults to allowing all open access. So what that means is if you know that, if you know the IP address of a machine, you know that it's running ROS, then you can actually communicate with the ROS node whether or not you should have access to that um, so what they've done in this paper is that they scanned all IPv4 addresses and they found about 100 ROS um, master cores and uh, they worked with another I think they tested it on their own robot and they also worked with another university and they were able to control that robot and read sensor data um, just by learning about its IP address over the internet and sending commands to that ROS master core, which is r really, really bad. Um, that That's tremendously bad. This was back in July of 2018. We can see the date on here. Um, so what this means for you is if you have a, uh, a robot or, or anything that's running ROS, it is not secure by default. And if you have it access, if you have it open to the internet, um, to the public internet, then anybody can find your IP address um, and connect to your robot and control it. Uh, it that this is a this is a really bad thing. Um, I. I'm looking at the ROS2 spec, and I don't know much about it. Um, I know that they're working on ROS2. But um, if anybody out there who's working on ROS2, please, please add authentication um, and security features to ROS. You know, um, again, I, I don't know a whole lot about what's going on underneath the, the, the cover of ROS. Um, but I know it's using HTTP to send messages and it's kind of like a, a REST API, um, you should 
I think pretty easily be able to add some sort of authentication layer to that, um, to where you know it you, maybe you pass tokens around. Like you first authenticate, you get a token, then you just kind of pass tokens around to make sure that you actually have access to the server. And I don't know if there's any support like that um, available today, but that would be a great great feature to add. Um, okay, so what do we do with this information? Um, that I have learned. Um, well, let me just talk about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to fix this and how to prevent yourself from, um, from, from having, from being exposed to this kind of issue. Uh, it's actually a pretty simple solution and I'll show you. Um, but it means that by default, your ROS machine is not secure. Um, and it means that you will need to fix it. Um, I can tell you with all TR1s moving forward, we're implementing this fix. Um, so any robots that are shipped out literally from today when I found out about this and uh, beyond will all be shipped with the, 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 the patch for, for this issue and will not, be, um, will not be exposed to this kind of issue. Let me talk about the MongoDB hack. Does anybody remember this? Um, this was back in... The beginning of 2017. Um, so the MongoDB, if you don't know, is a it's an open source database, um, and it's it's really popular with people that build um, JavaScript backends. Um, I love building JavaScript servers. Um, I love working with Node.js, and MongoDB. Um, it's just it's a document store, and it, it's. Uh, what do they call it? It's like distributed. I can't remember the exact term for it, um, but it, it works really well with with um, JavaScript, and, and it's you know you don't nothing strictly defined. Like you can really easily create new um, you know properties to, to documents and things like that. So it's it's a great database. It's open source. It's free to use. Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, we will we'll see here. That prior to version 2.6, MongoDB, the default configuration, uh, binds MongoDB to localhost. And basically meant that if you have MongoDB running on a server, and that server is open to the internet, anybody can access your, your database. Um, there's probably good reasons for why you would want to do that. And, you know, there's probably good reasons for why you would want that with ROS too. But the the, the, the reason why is that it makes it easy to, you know, communicate between servers. You know, it's like this server's just always listening for commands. And maybe this server over here wants to send data or request data or something. So it's just, it just makes, you know, uh, development really easy. The downside to that is, again, anybody can send commands to a MongoDB database. This wouldn't be all that bad except for the fact that also mongodb does not have um, authentication enabled by default so mongodb binds to localhost and just listens to any commands on a certain port and uh, mongodb just assumes that like any command that does get sent to the server is good and it will execute it so what this meant was that like some 30,000, I think the number's even even higher, but like basically like, I remember numbers like 50,000. So like 50,000 uh, unsecure MongoDB instances were found on the open internet. And a large, large number of them, um, hackers, the term hacker is actually even fairly generous here because it was basically people just sending um, commands to all these databases. So uh, certain um, organizations would send out basically the delete command for the entire database and rewrite the database with just one document that said, you know, we owned you and uh, if you want your data back, send, send us Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, um, and it could have been even before this, but but anyway, I remember this quite vividly because one of my servers um, was open to the internet, and um, 
did not have authentication enabled and got owned. Uh, so that was a rather unfortunate time for me, and I lost all my data that was on that database. Uh, so that was that was a hard lesson to learn. And uh, I just so happened to, you know, n normally you have also the, the firewall through AWS, which is where I had the server. Um, and, and normally I have, you know, only certain, only allows connections from certain IP addresses, but I opened it back up to everything for some reason because I don't know I was trying to work on it from a different machine or something like that and anyway um, so that was really unfortunate learn from my mistake uh, you do not I mean this could be even worse I think with Ross you know it's more than just losing data I mean this is this is pretty serious stuff so it's the exact same kind of thing um, with Ross it's the exact same thing there's no authentication by default, I don't even think there's any authentication that you can do with Ross at all, like not to my knowledge. And then number two, it just listens to anything, any, it just, you know, it, you load up Ross Core Master and it just starts listening to, to, um, uh, to the public internet. So how do we fix this? Uh, even the paper suggests, see if I can find it. Um, and filter. Yeah, it, so for client machines using ROS, we suggest using an OS level firewall, um, for example, net filter, to restrict incoming traffic on all ports except for trusted, net, trusted networks. So what they recommend, and what I agree with, is to use a firewall on your operating system that is going to prevent any traffic coming into um, your machine. Um, I believe, uh, let's see, Ross Core Master um, Port 11311 or something. Yeah, 11311 is the is the port by default that Ross Master uses. Um, and Ross, I know, also uses a whole bunch of other ports um, randomly uh, when it's setting up its nodes and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, but one example is you could limit, you could have a firewall to prevent any machine from accessing port 11311, and that's a good strategy. An even better strategy is to just prevent all incoming traffic from all ports. Now, um, you know, I like setting up web servers um, on my machine and uh, to allow... Um, outside traffic, and, and I'm even wanting to build a web server that runs on the robot uh, with authentication and everything um, enabled, and, and you know usernames and passwords and all that kind of stuff, and to actually allow certain people from outside of our network um, to run the robot. Uh, so that's something that I'm I'm, I'm working towards. So p and plus you want like SSH enabled and things like that. Um, so what I've um, what I've built out here, um, and actually I didn't, uh, I found an answer from server fault, basically how do you block all IP, all incoming traffic um, to, you know, to your machine except for a handful of ports. And I found this answer, and if you, if you go to our blog post, I link to that, um, and I state here explicitly that I found this answer there. Um, but basically, if you're using Linux, you can use IP tables and um, you can define your input um, to accept traffic from port 80, port 443, and port 22, which is going to be HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH, and then drop all traffic um, or all, um, yeah, drop all, all, all uh, traffic from there. Um, but that also means you need to have SSH configured securely, right? Um, and if you go to our blog post, you'll see um, all that information there for, for you know what other people are suggesting um, for for configuring SSH securely. You know, if you're going to open up SSH, uh, that could be that's definitely even worse than uh, you know if someone is able to access your machine through SSH who's not supposed to. That's definitely even worse. Um, and then finally, like, you got to have a good password. Um, so, like, you know, the firewalls is, is going to be a, the biggest thing. It's, like, 
the, the least obvious thing I think about um, about the, this whole uh, security issue with ROS. Um, and then finally, make sure SSH is securely configured and make sure you have a great password. Um, I would say for most people, actually don't even run these lines here. You know, just just limit all incoming traffic um, unless you, A, need it for some reason, like in our, our case, and, or, and B, you know what you're doing. Um, so... This, this is a big issue. You know, it's a pretty simple fix. Um, you know, you can also run your, your robot um, or your ROS master um, on, you know, a private network that doesn't have access to, to the outside world. You know, but most people, I would guess, are not doing that because, you know, you want to install packages and, and et cetera. Um, so I think I agree with them that this is actually the best um, best case scenario and all of our robots that were, are getting sh shipped out or are getting shipped out with um, this IP tables configuration um, so hopefully TR1s are not going to be exposed to these kinds of issues um, so anyway I just wanted to pass that information along um, I learned something today and uh, this is going to be these kinds of things are going to be big issues I mean just imagine you know five ten years from now Robots are getting a little more popular, but like, you know, not so popular that people are like super concerned about security. And, you know, you could have instances where, where people are breaking in, like breaking into people's homes through robots. It's 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 pretty crazy. Um, so make sure you're, you're secured. Make sure your robot's secured. Um, and I will check you guys next time. Be sure to figure out or to, to check out the TR1. Um, my name's Zach. I'm with uh, Slate Robotics. I'm the CEO. And uh, we build human-sized robot platforms for machine learning engineers who are really interested in learning more about the future of robotics and want to play a really key integral part in, in how that, that story unravels. We're the only company building these kinds of robots uh, at an affordable price, at a price that is uh, uh, you know, uh, approachable for many many engineers out there we sell the tr1 a two-arm version for just forty five hundred dollars um we sell a one-arm version for thirty two hundred dollars and uh we've got robots going all over the united states and uh in canada shout out to the canadians uh, you guys um honestly they're, they're I, i've been surprised by that there's been a lot of canadians that have been been purchasing um and interested in the tr1 uh and are even willing to put up with you know, the crazy shipping rates and, and customs and taxes and all that kind of stuff that it takes to get one of these over there. So shout out to you guys and um, thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll see you guys later.